Hey, Ross developers, welcome to a new live class here in uh, in uh, the Ross developers live class. Sorry, I was here uh, concentrating myself on uh, everything on the live and relaxing a little bit before we start with the class. Uh, now I'm ready. So I hope that all of you are also ready. Remember, what are we going to learn today about ROS? So today we are going to learn about how to do action servers and how to use it in ROS. So why do we create action servers and how? what is the purpose? Why do we use them? Okay, so we are going to do some exercises about that and we are going to use a drone. And remember that all the material that I'm going to share with you is going to be shared by means of a ROS jet. So I have created a ROS jet together with my uh, colleague Tushar, and uh, we have created this ROS jet that contains some instructions, some code, and you are going to receive that in in a few uh, seconds. So you can uh, reproduce the same results as I am doing uh, at the same time. So you have to practice, okay? So you have to open this ROS jet and follow the instructions. You don't know how to do it, don't worry. I'm going to explain that to you. And for all of that, we are going to use the ROS Development Studio that uh, if you haven't created a free account, then what are you waiting for? So you should have already created. It's on the note of the video, so check it out. Go very, very quickly and create a, an account if you haven't. And uh, let's start by uh, sharing the ROS yet. So remember, that uh, there is a chat here on the video, beside the video, and you can ask any question or indicate if you ha are having any problem. You are not following, you are lost on one step, your drone is not flying, whatever. Okay, so uh, let's do this, an interactive live class. That's the purpose and that's the uh, power of the ROS development studio that allow us to do this in real time. And see, I see here some people that are still entering into the class. I see Gloria. Hello, Gloria. How are you doing? Uh, from uh, She says from Palo Alto, California. Great, Gloria, to see you again. And here, Denisa. Hello, Denisa. And uh, many other people there that are shame or very shy people. So don't worry. You are also welcome. We, we are happy here to have you all here. So uh, let's uh, start by sharing the ROS yet, okay? Uh, hello, Devandra, hello, Walid, okay, hello. Hello, everybody. So let's start because we have to a lot of work to do. And also remember that today we are going, at, by the end of the class, we are going to uh, do a short, a very, very quick uh, lottery for, uh, uh, for the winner of a vector, Anki vector robot. That is some part of the, that we did on the Black Friday um, offer that we did. So today we are going to show the winner in real time and during the class. Hello, Danny. Uh, hello, everyone. So let's go. Let me share my screen with all of you so you can see how I am sharing the Rajet with you. It's very simple, it's very fast. So here you can see I am inside the ROS development studio. I hope you all are. And this is the ROS yet we have created for this uh, live class today. And in order to share this with you, I just only have to do this, share, and then copy the link here. And once I have the link, I have to put it on the uh, on the chat that we have on the online or, uh, beside the video that you are watching. And before I do that, let me shorten this using Bitly because the chat is a little bit uh, not working very well with long uh, links. So I have created this and now I'm posting there on the chat. So everyone that are there, just go and click on that link. What will happen when you click on that link? Well, it will automatically create a copy of this project in your ROS Development Studio account. If you don't have an account or you are not logged in, it will redirect you towards the sign in, sign up page and tell you, hey, once you sign up, then you will get a copy of this. So uh, just do it. Then let's uh, 
copy this by clicking on the link. And once you have that, then just open the Rosette. That is the button here, open Rosette. So let's go and let's open. Here is the Rosette for today. And here we are. And uh, this is the notebook that we are going to use today. It contains all the material that we are going to follow and discuss today. So you can see that it contains some code, some instructions, some uh, images, etc. And just to let you know that uh, today we are going to work with C++. Okay, so the de development of ROS Action Service using C++ for this specific um, life class of today. So I'm making some time so people can get the Rosette and open it and be to up to that point. Let me remind you in the meantime that uh, this is a Rosette. That what, what I have shared with you is a Rosette. And uh, if you want to know more about Rosette, about how to create your own so you can distribute your work for your students, for your research, for your followers, whatever, just to have the information here. Read this information about how to create a Rosjet. And a Rosjet is composed, let me show you here, you go into the IDE, by several parts. One part is the code. In this case today, we don't have any code because we have to develop. Then there is a notebook. It depends if you want to create a notebook. All of those are uh, are not mandatory, so they are optional. You can decide at any point to create. So here is the code of the notebook that we have open here. And then there is the simulation workspace. So by combining all those things into one single package that works on any computer, that's the purpose of a ROS yet. That is what I have shared with you today. Okay, so uh, just making some time to make people uh, open the ROS yet and be up to date. And I hope that all of you are up and running and you have reached this page. Okay, so let's go and continue. So uh, let's see what we are going to do. Before starting, remember that I have included here a link to the video of this live class. So afterwards, you can select this cell and then press play. And then you can do a replay of this class and, and see again in case that you would like to repeat this or you share this Rosjet with somebody else, then he will be able to follow the instructions. So let's start. What is a ROS action? So if you remember from the previous class, we were discussing about what is a ROS service. And a ROS service was basically um, function that one ROS node is providing to all the other ROS nodes. That means that all the other ROS nodes, all the other ROS programs that are separate programs that are running on the same computer, let's say, they, they want to call this function that the first node is providing. Let's see that there is a, a, a service, a ROS service that when it is called, it will check the camera for uh, a, a, an image and check if there is a person in front of the camera and at a face detector. Then all the nodes, all the programs, all the ROS programs that are running on the same computer, on the same robot, then they can call it at any point in time and get an answer. So there could be a program that is a, a program in the robot that is for saying hello to people that is calling their series in a in a regular basis, then it could be another program that is a different one that is trying to detect if there is a person that is a male or a female in order to understand how the robot has to uh, speak to that person, uh, either as a Mr. or as a Miss. And so that would be a server. It's a function that when another ROS node calls it, then it stops. The, the calling note is a stop there until it gets the answer. The ROS action is something that is, is uh, different in the sense that when a node is providing a ROS action server, then it means that it is 
providing also a function that can be called by other ROS nodes, by other programs of the robot. It's the same concept. But the only difference is that when you call a ROS action function that is provided by the ROS action server, then the node that is calling is not stopped. It's not waiting for the answer of the action server. So it's not blocked. And that is quite interesting because that allows you to create things, to do things in parallel. And one very uh, interesting example of this is when you have to do um, navigation. So you have to do navigation go, and then you want that the master node wants to call the navigation system and say, hey, please move the robot from here to the door. And then it sends this goal to the navigation system. And then the navigation system, it will start moving around the robot. But the main node, the central node, this is free for, for doing other things. So for example, it can, at the same time, then while the robot is moving towards that goal, then the central node, it will be able to call other services or salute people or find for interesting uh, objects on its way and memorize them, whatever it wants to do. So that's the main difference. That's what we call that a uh, ROS action is asynchronous while a service is synchronous because the calling node is synchronized to the thread of the node that provides the server in the case of the service. And for the case of the action server, it's asynchronous. You just call it, and then you forget about it. So actually, you don't forget because you you need to get the result and the, and you can get some feedback. Also, that's also something we are going to explain about that. But about how to obtain this feedback and result, it's not going to be uh, explaining this class because today we are going to do about we are going to talk about the ROS action server. In order to call a ROS action server, you need a ROS action client. And how to create a ROS action client, it's going to be the work of another day, of another live class. So let's just start with the action server. That is the most important one. And here is the image that I mentioned about the, the two nodes that there is one, the node number two, that provides an action server. So this node has a function that can be called by any other node around here inside the robot. And here there is a node one that wants to call it, wants to call and say, hey, please do this while I'm doing something else. OK, so the Rush node one has to implement a, an action client in order to call the Rush action server. And uh, so how does it does this? There is a uh, several signals that are going to send to one place to another. <clears throat> and uh, the, the signals can go from one direction, from the caller to the call, called uh, node. So when the node one, that is the one that is going to call, wants to activate the action server, what it says, it sends a goal. It sends a goal. So it is going to send a goal to this uh, one. And then this one will take this goal, will pick it, and then start executing it. And as this one is executing it, it can provide some feedback about the status. For example, if this node is providing an action server for navigating, this feedback can indicate, oh, I am getting, I am getting close to the door or i'm i'm still one meter uh, to reach the this the the goal i'm two meters i am decreasing or you know, whatever that's a feedback that this action server is implementing and deciding to send to the other one so this one even if it has call and uh, then it can do other things it can also keep some line keep some uh, feedback some attention to what is happening then at uh, whenever this is completed or is ended, the action server, then the result is sent also to the node number one. And the result says either, okay, it's okay, or it's not okay, so it's uh, 
or any other thing, any other information that you would like to send from this node to the other one. And then there is the status. The status is uh, another signal that this node is generating while executing that is indicating the current state of the this action server. It is executed, executing a uh, goal, it is a stop, etc., etc. So there are several. You, you can have here the list of all the possible um, uh, values that this signal can produce. Okay, so we have active, preempted, succeeded, aborted, whatever. So uh, when you you also from when you call the server, you can also send another signal that is the cancel signal. So at any point in time, the action client has the power to cancel the current. Uh, action that is being e executed. So imagine that this says, this node, node one says, hey, please go to the door. That's the goal. And then node two starts executing this action and it's moving, but for some reason it cannot reach the goal because I don't know, there are some kids there preventing the robot from moving. So the feedback is getting back all the time and saying, hey, I am at two meters of the door. Hey, I am at two meters of the door. Hey, I am two meters of the door. I am 2.1 meters of the door. Then this node is saying, oh, this something is wrong here. So it's not working. So let's cancel that and let's provide another goal, a different goal. So then this one can just send the cancel and this goal will be canceled. And yeah, and then be ready for another goal. Yes, uh, so there is a question on the chat that says Devendra, that says, it is the same as RPC. Yes, I think that the concept is the same. I, I'm i not super expert of RPC, but I think that the concept is the same. It's a way of calling from one thread of a program into another thread of a program without blocking the, pre, the, the one, the first one. Okay, so how do we do all these manage all these uh, signals well uh, we do it we manage that by means of a message definition and some topics okay so here we have the message definition is the message like in the server we had a message that we had to create that contained two parts first part was the goal and second part was the result in this case, for the action, the message contains three parts, the goal, the result, and the feedback. So this is the structure of an action message. We are going to create one right now. Okay. And then uh, every time that you create an action server, the action server will create automatically those five topics. And those five topics are the ones from which the the messages, the, the different types of messages can be sent in order to activate, cancel, get the status, result, etc. So you are going to see that we'll have those uh, five uh, topics when we start our action server. Okay, so let's start now. It's enough of uh, theory. Let's start by doing things. So you have to do uh, you'll have to do with me uh, the following. Let's launch the the Parrot R drone simulation. For that, we go to simulations, and then here we go back down, down until we find the Parrot uh, here, Parrot drone. Okay, so now it's starting, and this is the simulation that we are going to work with. Then there is another question by. Devendra that says, can I execute multiple calls at once from node one without receiving a response from node two? No, you cannot. If you execute one call, for example, if you execute one and then you execute another one, the, the second one will cancel the, the first one. Then Bihai says, acknowledgments from nodes, node two to node one will be required, I guess, before executing next call. Uh, okay. Well, actually, it is cancelled by default. It is cancelled. So uh, let's continue. I have the simulation here of the drone, and there is some space. And what we are going to do, it's uh, an action server that when it is called, then the 
drone will go to a certain location of the space of the 3d space so this the the message the goal when we call from node one to the node two of the of the action server that we are going to create we have to provide in the goal the 3d point the 3d point at which we want the robot to to be to reach that point based on odometry framework and then that's the goal that we want to so we can do this for example that could be useful if we want that node one is taking pictures of all the background of, while the robot is moving in several positions so it could be like a surveillance uh, drone for example so node one will say hey go to this point and then this node is taking charge of moving the robot to that point and in the meantime node one is still taking pictures from from the camera that points towards the ground for example that's an example okay today we are going to do only the node two part and we are going to call the goals we are not going to create the action client because there is no time uh, but uh, there we are going to call it anyway by using directly by publishing into the topics okay so basically the action client what it does is to allow us to call from a program by publishing into the topics in a in a clear way in an easier way in a more convenient way but today we are not going to create this part here so we are going to call directly the topics and see how the action server is activated okay so yeah but, so this is a gif that is showing more or less how what is the result that we are expecting okay so let's go let's create our action server first we need to create the ROS package uh, let's see first here uh, shell we need a shell so go to tools and then select the shell and here let's create a package inside the catkin workspace so if you do an ls here you will see that there are several workspaces in the simulation workspaces where we should put all ROS packages related to the simulation something that it's required to make the simulation run today we are not using any specific simulation what the one that is provided by ross ds already in notebooks we have to put all the things related to the notebook to this thing here images text files <clears throat> whatever and then here is where we put on catkin workspaces where we put our code the code that should run into the robot itself so let's go there catkin workspace and then inside source remember that you have to create your packages inside source and uh, now let's create the package uh, for creating package you have here the command and uh, we are going to call it ross action whoops ross action server demo and then this is the name so in, in order to create a package you have to use catkin create package then we have to put the name of the package that we want to create and then afterwards all the dependencies dependencies that we need in order to create that in order to make this package work so we need as you can see raw cpp because it's a cpp program then the messages message generation and then action leave and action leave messages because we are going to create our own message also so that all the dependencies don't be too worried about the dependencies because if you don't put it them there then you can do it later by modifying the package xml but it's easier if you put it and also the cmake list it's easier if you put it there because then the system automatically does it for you so anyway let's create by copying and pasting this command and the package has been created uh, if you go to tools and ide you will see that there is has been created let me close this and this here our package ross action server with one include folder and a source one okay so so far so good great so you have here more uh, information about the dependencies and everything you can check later don't worry and now now we are going to do something very important is to create the action message the action message as remember as i explained here 
is the one that defines how we are going to define the goal. So what, what it is the kind of information that we had to provide from node one to node two in order to indicate this, that it has to do something. So in this case, the goal is going to be the coordinates of the on, in 3D that we want to reach. Then the result is the same thing, is the information that node two has to provide to the node one once everything has been finished. And then the feedback is the information that node two has to provide to node one on a regular basis. So let's go and let's see what is the one that we have uh, decided to create. Okay. So for the messages, in the depending on the type of message that you are building, you need to create a specific directory. So for simple topic messages, you have to create an MSG directory. For a service message, you have to create an SRV mess directory and put the messages there. For an action, server you have to create an action directory and put the messages there okay so if we go here you can do it manually through the shell or you can do it also here directly on the ide go select the the, the package name that we have created and then right click and say new folder and call it action its name is mandatory so it has to be like this Okay, so we got it. And then inside here, let's create the file that is going to define our action message. And for that, let me do right click and new file. And we are going to call it like this. It's already explained on the notebook, okay? My demo msg dot, and that's the important part. It has to be action, dot action file. Whatever you put at the beginning, it's okay. It's the name of your message, actually. So it's how you are going to call it. In this case, call it like that, because otherwise the, the code that you are going to copy and paste is not going to work if you change it. But for your own messages, actual messages that you will create in the future, you can put here whatever you want. But it has to end in dot action. That is mandatory. Okay, so let's open it. If I open and it's empty, of course, and uh, let me put it here uh, with a big, yeah. So the code of the message is here. Copy this one, copy inside the file, my demo message dot action. And as you can see, we have uh, three parts. Each part is divided by those three uh, hyphens. One part here and another one here. So here we have the goal part, then the result part, and then the feedback. On the goal, we have the three points as a float 64. We could have used another structure like a point 3D or something. That's for simplifying things. So those are the three coordinates that we want the robot, the, the drone, to reach. Then the result is a string indicating the status at the end. And then the feedback is indicating the distance from at present until the, the, the goal. So the distance at, that the robot is at present while executing the action. OK, remember to save. Whenever there is a, this ball here, this, this dot, you remember they have to save either Control S or File Save. So now it's safe. Remember that. That's important because otherwise it will not work. You will think that it's automatically safe and it's not going to work. Great. So, uh, yeah, so this is explaining all that. And now we are going to uh, create the action server. So that is the code of the action. And for that, we are going to put it inside the source directory, of course. That's where it has to be. And uh, here you can do a right click and create a new file. And let's call it action underscore server dot cpp and then open it it's empty and we are going to copy all this information here of this cell this is the action server and afterwards we are going to analyze okay don't worry so we are i'm going to explain you what is the code what it's doing 
So in order to do that, you can select the cell and then do a Control A and Control C to copy. Control A to select everything and then Control C to copy. And then come here and do a Control V to paste. And remember to save. Remember that you need to save this file. Okay, so we have it. So we have the code and let's go and let's have a look at the code. So what is the parts, the different parts? So um, this, week, this week we have included this into a class. So now it's proper C++ code for creating an action server and, and putting everything inside the a class. So it's encapsulated. And what we have uh, is here the main and we initialize the ROS as a ROS node. Here. And it's going to be called Action Server. That's the name that is going to be called our uh, node. That's the name of the node. And then we are creating an, an instance of this class, Move Drone Action. And after that, we are just uh, waiting here on a loop forever and uh, in a rate of 0 0.5. Uh, so it means once every two seconds is going to put here one number that is increasing up to infinitum. And uh, this, uh, this loop, I have put it this year because I wanted to show you that even if this code is generated in the same thread, so the action, whenever the action server is called, it is generated in a different thread. So this loop, you're going to see that this loop is running, and then the other one is also running at the same time. OK, so um, uh, yeah. So let's see this class, OK, this class here. And this is the move drone action. And what we do here at the beginning is to, well to is we are defining here the null handler and some variables there, and uh, but I think that uh, the best thing is that we come here to the uh, drone action in to the constructor of the class, and here what we have is the creation of the action server. That the action server is is this variable here that is defined uh, here. Where is it? Where is it? Let me see. Let me put it bigger. Here it is. Yeah. So it's this. Um, this this is the action server. Okay. So here is where you define your action server, and the action server when you define it, well, it has to be. Uh, simple action server class from action lib, and then here you have to identify. You have to indicate which one is the message that is going to rule this action server, the the description of the action, and forever. So forever, you you always have to use the same structure for this. Is first. Uh, if you have defined the action message here in this package, then you have to indicate here the, the name of the package. And then you have to indicate here the name of your message as you have indicated, as you have defined here in the action file, plus action afterwards. So this is the convention in order to do it. So when you create your own messages for actions, remember that. And that's it. That's it. You, you only have to remember this this structure and then everything will work for your own messages. Okay, so this is the same for all the cases. Uh, this is the name of your class, how you are going to call it. This is this could be whatever. And here is the template because this is a template. So you have to provide here the message that you want to use for this action server. Okay, then what else? Um, yeah, so when we go to the to the constructor, we are initializing this action server, and for that we need the node handler, a name, and it, because that's the name that we are going to use for uh, calling it. So every action server has a name, in the same sense as the services they had a name. So you have to call this specific 
server. Now we have to specify the name of that specific action server. And here we are providing this as a parameter on the constructor. And if we go here to the main, we know that the, our um, action server is going to be called like this. Go to point AIS. Great. So that's it uh, here. Yeah. So that's the name. And then finally, you have to indicate you have to indicate the callback that you want to execute. So this is the function, the function that you are going to execute every time that somebody calls this action server. And in this case, it's inside is a function inside the class drone action, and it's called action CB. And this is a function that is defined here, around here, here. Here it is. Okay, so that's the callback that is going to be executed when we create, we call this. Okay, so then the yeah action name, well, that's a variable that I don't know what is doing this, I don't remember. It's just a string, okay, yeah. So it's holding the name. Yeah, I don't remember why we have that. Well, anyway, not important. Then we initialize the subscribers and the publishes, and then we start the server. So this is when we, once the server has been created, then we have to start it in order to provide it ready for anybody to call it. And yeah, so in the subscribers and the publishers, those two functions are here defined. And one is that we are subscribing to the post of the robot. Why? Because we need to, uh, to know at which location is the robot and the drone. And then in order to do the calculations about where I'm going, if I have been said to go to that position. And then for the publishers, we need to publish into the common bell. And also we need a couple of other uh, topics that need are required in order just to make the drone to take off. So basically the one that is important is this one, because we could have done this at the beginning of the sentence and that's all. So, well, anyway, so the important one is this one for providing the control to the robot. And as you know, when you subscribe, uh, you when you subscribe in this case, you provide a callback. That is the callback. This is the function that is going to be executed every time that there is a new pose for the drone. And this function here is the one that is described here. And it's just storing the current pose of the robot into a variable of the class. So other functions here can use it later. Okay, so far so good. Then the important part is the one that we haven't described here is the callback. And the callback is this function here. And uh, yeah, so here we receive the goal message as a pointer. And actually it's a reference to a pointer. And then, uh, well, what we do is, um, is uh, get the goal of the robot, so the position of the robot from the goal message. And then, um, well, in this part here, we are taking off the robot, so the, the drone is, because now the drone is on the ground. So uh, then we, we are just making it move um, um, off the ground, so we, it, can, it can start flying. And then um, this is for publishing, uh, yeah. So, to that data messages for uh, for the for for using a, a position control mode into the the drone. And don't worry about that because it's not important at this moment. It's just related to the control of the drone. Basically, it means that we are going to control the robot by position. And that's all. So at, that, at this point, we have the goal. Where do we want to go? And the, the drone is ready to accept commands. And then we start this loop here. And this loop will continue until the distance to the goal is less than uh, 10 centimeters. That is basically. Then, basi then what we do is that we publish a new movement towards the, uh, to, for, to make the robot move into the direction that uh, we have uh, 
established as the, as the goal, then compute the distance from the current position to the goal and provide this as a feedback. So how are we going to provide this distance as a feedback? By publishing this as a feedback. So here is where we can compute the distance to the goal that we have. And then here is where we publish into the topic of feedback. So if we come here to the, to the diagram that we have at the beginning, so that is the actual line that is doing the publication of the feedback. And remember that this is inside the loop. So this feedback is going to be published at this rate of the loop. In this case, it's 50. I think it's too much. OK, so, well, so but it's OK. So 50, let's say 50, whatever. Then, uh, yeah, so then what, what we do afterwards then? We check at this point if the action has been preempted. So if there is a request to preempt, what does it mean? A preempt means that the node one has requested to cancel. Then it means, hey, please stop whatever you are doing. A preempt the action that you are doing. And that is the check. So if there is no preempted, then we continue moving it. Uh, so, uh, what, sorry, in this case is if has been requested, so it's not the opposite, is if it has been requested to cancel, then, uh, well, we publish the, the drone to stop, and then uh, we uh, set the action as preempted and success as false. By doing this, we are indicating the status of this action server, that the action has been preempted. And remember that this is one of the signals that we can provide into the status, oops, into the status topic that is preempted here. So uh, here it is the, the, and then uh, once we have this, we signal that success is false. Why? Because it has been aborted, the, the goal, so it's not success. And we break the, also this. And afterwards, well, we provide everything. So um, what else? So we repeat this all the time. We compute the move, and that is the distance from uh, the current location to the goal. And we publish it here, and that's it all the time. And what else? What else? Yeah, so once the distance is less than 0 0.1, we end the loop also, and then we check if it has been a success. And then if it has been a success, then we create the message that we are going to provide into the status as destination arrived. And then this is the result. This is the result message. And we provide this information here in set succeeded result. And that's all. And then that's finished. So basically, that is all the code. As you can see, it's quite simple for an action server. It's a pain to understand, to, to remember all those things, you know, the uh, structure of this, the, and, and the loop, you have to check for, you have to check for the, so for publishing the feedback, if it has been preempted. So you, you have a several, and then uh, set the action server as preempted. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But once you have everything, the structure here, that's it. We have it. So uh, now, now that we have the code, let's try co to compile this. So in order to compile, we need to. Here you can see the explanation I have uh, indicated. So you can see it here. And let me go here. Here, yeah. So for compiling, we need to edit the CMake. So let's go to the CMake that is here, and let's open it, and let's put this. So on the CMake, apart from the required components that have been already filled by the system, then we need to we need to uh, and comment those files here. My demo. So the add action files. So this is commented here. 
uh, here at action files you see it is commented here so this has to be uncommented and then you have to include the files and also your demo message action you have to include that here then uh, also you have to uncomment the part that indicates generate messages and provide those dependencies uh, the action leap messages and the standard messages that are everything is commented here as you can see then uh, what else uh, yeah you, well you you have to include here the action server for executable that um, generates uh, the action server from um, binary from the cpp and that's it so generate the libraries and uh, any dependencies so uh, that's it this is the part that is below so uh, we can do one thing is to uncomment the things here but i usually do some mistakes and here the, by uncommenting some stuff so what i'm going to do is copy here because i know that it works I'm going to copy and then here select everything and paste so now i'm sure that my file is going to compile but uh, and also has been removed many many things that are not necessary but uh, you can do it manually okay but i don't want to waste the time in case that there is an error finally we have the to edit the package xml and actually for the package xml i think that we have to do nothing because it's already everything is done if i i remember properly then yeah everything is done yeah because you have to make sure that those build dependencies and exec dependencies are correct and i think that they are so there is no extra because we have provided the dependencies at the beginning so uh, yes uh, everything is there so that's it let's go on let's compile it so in order to do that, remember that you have to go to the Catkin workspace. So if we go to the shell that we opened previously, let's go one directory up, and then Catkin workers, uh, Catkin make, Catkin make to compile everything. And let's hope that I didn't do any mistake on the code, and you neither. So let me drink some water while it is loading. You can post, post your question in now. Okay, it's still compiling here. And let's see. Let's see, here it goes. Now, what is also generating is the messages, so the code for the messages. And that is why we'll have to do the next step is to, before we launch it, is to do the source in order to acknowledge all those new definitions. And <clears throat> that's it, it compiled, so let's launch it. In order to launch it, very simple. We, we are not going to create a launch file now, so just use ROS run then the name of the package that is ross action server demo action server demo demo and then the name of the binary that is called action server and okay action server oh yes i i have said and i haven't done done so we have to source the devil setup dot bash okay and let's launch it and as you can see is doing uh, nothing there yeah the drone is doing nothing yeah and what is that so and it's publishing this uh, number every two seconds once every two seconds yeah this is just to indicate that it's alive that i put it at the in the while but uh, the drone is doing nothing so what is happening well what is happening is that the action server is up and running so let's go and open another shell and let's see about the topics that have been created so if you do a ross topic list you will see that there is a set of uh, topics that are called go to point as action server 
you see that there is a series. Okay? And what, which ones are those? The cancel, the feedback, the goal, the result, and the status. Those are the topics that indicate that there is an action server running. If you remember, I'm going up, 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 in order to show you the topics that I mentioned before. Here they are, the goal, the cancel, the status, results, and feedback. This is the indication, those topics, that there is an action server that is called go to point as so there is no command in, no, there is no command in ross that says ross action list for example there, it doesn't exist like ross service list that provides all the services there is no ross action list the way to see if there is any action there running in your robot is by doing a ross topic list and checking for those five topics if there are those files then it means that the action server is this one okay so we got it then let's call the topic of the goal. So let's provide a goal. Let's call this action server and provide a goal. And for that, well, we have to do a Rust topic pub. If we do a Rust topic pub, then we will provide a goal, a Rust topic pub into this topic. Then we'll provide a goal, then the robot will move. But before doing that, let me do another thing before, more interesting. So let's open another shell here and open it here, very small, and do a ROS topic echo of the result topic. So let's do a ROS topic echo of the result topic that is called go to point uh, result. Of course, there will be nothing because still hasn't received any any result because he hasn't done any action. Now let's open another one. Let's open another one. Yeah, that, they are free. You know the the shells. They are free. So let's open many others, and let's do a Rust topic e echo also of the feedback. So go to point. Um, go to point. Yeah. Then feedback. Okay, so it's also going to say nothing now. But when we call with a goal, we'll see how those windows are going to start being populated by the different messages. So uh, let's now publish into the goal a goal for the robot. So uh, in this case, we have to do a ROS topic pub in order to publish into that topic, not to echo, not to listen, but to publish and say go to go to point AS, then go, then you, if you do a double tap, then it will auto complete all this structure. The system is going to detect which one is the topic that needs to be published there, and also will provide an initial structure for that. And here you can see that there is the X, Y, and Z goal part. Let's go and let's move this and create that. For example, let's say Z at one, I don't know. Uh, well, here in the example, I put uh, two, but yeah, but it's okay. Also, one, let's say Y, let's say, I don't know, five, and X, let's say one. I don't know. Just inventing now. And let me put it here so we can see it better. And once you do that, you press enter, the goal will be sent to the action server, and then the robot should start moving and activating. Here, there it goes. And then it moves to, into to the goal. And as you can see, the feedback has been generated along the movement. You can see that there is a lot of feedback that has been generated, indicating the distance, as well as other things of the message. That's OK. And it, it's it, this distance is being decreasing in every step, is decreasing, decreasing, until it reaches the uh, the position that it is. Actually, there are many here, but many of them. OK, so let me see. Yeah, I see many similar distances. So that is strange because I cannot see. I cannot see here the distance decreasing. Actually, there is an error here because this distance, I don't see that is decreasing. It's always the same number. Yeah, 
So, the, well, there is a problem here in the calculation of the distance. So probably there is an error on the code. But anyway, you can see that there is a, a, a feedback that is, is being generated. And also, this single message, this is a single message that's been generated once the robot has arrived. So it says destination arrived. And you can control C here and send another goal. For example, I don't know, let's say, let's say uh, one also Z, but let's say 15, or well, say 15 minus five. One, so it should move on the side, the robot. And we can see here the feedback being generated and the robot moving. Oh, yeah, no, the distance is being published properly. It's been published, pub oh, maybe it's because too many messages. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that could be. Oh, and the robot has crashed. Okay, so it's going to be there forever. And uh, yeah, because it's never going to reach until it times out. Okay, so, well, anyway, you, you can see this uh, thing. So that's, the, we can, what we can do is to cancel that. Yeah, let's do a cancel. So for that, let's publish into the cancel topic. So let's do a ROS topic pub, um, go to point, go to point AS, cancel. Cancel, then tap, tap, in order to generate this, uh, this uh, message and that's it let's go and let's cancel okay so it has a stop here the feedback being published and then this one has been exited and without any status because we didn't whenever we finish it the status we didn't fill the status so um but the the robot has been cancelled here the program so that's all for today. So you have seen how to create an action server and how to call the different topics. Also, how to create um, a message, a specific message with your own values, and how to provide the, those messages in the information that the client is requesting from calling it. And uh, we have a, problem, a question here from Gloria that says that she got an error when compiling. I'm still troubleshooting. Okay, so if you have that, then let me provide you a typical way of solving that. Very simple. If you go to the IDE first, go to the build and devil and, de and delete it. Delete directly, build and devil, delete. Then go to the files. Check that the files have the same name, the exact same name as I mentioned here in the action directory and here in the source directory. Then open them and then copy and paste from the cells here. Copy and paste from the code that is there. And then check also that the CMake is copy pasted. Also, the CMake, but it has to be this CMake, the CMake of the package, okay? So there is this CMake that is the general one of the Catkin workspace. You don't have to touch that one. It's the one inside the ROS action server demo. Then there is a CMake here, and that's the one that you have to edit and put the options. And then once you have that, then compile and then source again. Okay, so that's for today. So please, um, if you you like it, the class, please give us a like on the video. Give us a thumbs up in the video. You know that there is a thumbs up uh, in the video that you can press and say, hey, I like it. Thank you very much. That's very cool for, for us. So we know that what we are doing, it you are enjoying. And also we recommend you that you subscribe to our channel because uh, we, we are publishing new videos every day about ROS, how to do things with ROS. And so if you subscribe, you can receive the, the notifications about that. If you subscribe and press the bell. And finally, I would like to tell you that if you want to learn more about ROS, not just about this specific topic, only actions, but more about the actions, client, how to use them, how to apply, you can check our online academy that is called the Robot Ignite Academy. For example, we have a ROS basic C++ course that is very interesting and explains this in very detail, and you will do a lot of exercises 
on, on this using also simulations online and uh, it's it's the same procedure as you can see here and also you can do the same course in python the same if you prefer to program in python and if you do it now you will get a seven percent discount by using this coupon it's valid until tomorrow and basically that's it let me see if there is any question there for you and i'll be happy to to answer you i see that there is still of people there so uh, i don't know if you have any question related to what you have seen and then denisa says great course thanks i'm big fan of your tutorials thank you denisa my pleasure here and uh, also we are publishing it's not only me in my case i am doing the live classes but i have all my team there they are my my teammates that they are also doing the the courses uh, the the tutorials the videos every every day we are creating a new video and uh, different subjects uh, from simulations from to reinforcement learning ross to check check our channel i recommend you that you subscribe and you get tick the bell because you will see that every day there is something bump 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 and uh, then danny says ricardo do you know if ross two actions are going to be the same yeah well i don't know because actually ross to at present doesn't implement actions and i don't know what is going to happen actions it's a difficult subject and many many people doesn't program any never using actions so, so they behave by using topics and services at most but not action many many people i would say 80 percent of the people are programming ross so i, I understand that ross 2 has decided by now I, I suppose i don't know for sure but i suppose that they decided oh let's wait until we have more mature so i don't know what is going to happen with this then we have Koyo that says great tutorial. Thank you, Koyo. And Denisa says already subscribed. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you, Denisa. And uh, before you go, I would like to do so. This last week it was Black Friday, you know. And then one of the offers that we had is that you have the subscribe uh, discount if you do it. But also we were going to do a lottery for getting an Anki Cosmo. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a. Anki Vector Robot, Anki Vector Robot. And I don't know if you know about the robot, that's super cool, it's a small robot like this. So we are going to do a lottery among all the people that have subscribed to our academy on the last week. And just uh, have created here. Yeah, so C Shin, C says that we will do a lottery for the Black Friday event. Th yes, that's it, that's what I'm going to do right now. Let me share again the screen with you so you can see how i'm doing the lottery and what we have done is to create here a list of all the people so here it's a program you can use it for your own good this web mini web tool random picker and it's nice because you put here a list of people and then you get the and random a selection from from it so here you can see the names well the usernames of the people that have subscribed during last week and now let's do a random big item and see who has won the Anki Vector. Actually, you know what is the Anki Vector? Anki Vector robot. Let me show you because it's super cool. It's this robot here. Yes, so some images. Yeah, this is robot here. So we are going to do the lottery now. So let's go, let's go pick a random item. One, two, three. Who is going to be the winner? And let's see, it's... Husni Mubarak. Okay, Husni Mubarak. So uh, we are going to contact you, Husni. Congratulations, you have won the Anki Vector, and we are going to contact you in order to send you the the Anki uh, the Anki Vector robot for your joy. And uh, let us know. Send us a picture with the robot, or say something. Create some ROS programs for Anki Vector. And that is all for today, guys. So. I see that there are no more questions there, so we are going to stop here. For the next week, what we are going to do, we are going to see. For the next week, is a super cool, super cool subject. It's called domain randomization. How to do domain randomization using Gazebo and ROS is a technique of reinforcement learning that allows to train a robot in a simulation and then transfer this trained 
robot, uh, this trained controller, neural network, into the real robot and then behave in the same way by applying this technique about domain randomization. So that is going to be a tough subject, it's, uh, but it's, it's very cool because we are going to teach a, a fetch robot how to grasp an object from the, uh, actually how to identify the object from the table and then grasp it. That's what we are going to do. So I wait for you, for all of you, tell your friends and see you on the next live class. Remember, keep pushing your Ross learning guys. See you, bye.